Hello everyone, welcome to Chemizon Complete Chemistry. So in our today's video, we are going to solve some of the previous year questions based on the topic isomerism which were asked in IIT JAM exam. So here is the first question that I picked up from the JAM 2019 paper. The diastereomeric pair among the following is or are. So in the JAM exam, there is a section called as MSQ, that is multiple select question. So here you can see in every option, there are two molecules given to you and you have to find out which of the following pairs in each of the option is a diastereomer. In multiple select type of questions, you can have more than one correct answers. So in this question, you have to identify out of these four options, how many pairs of molecules are diastereomers. Let us see the solution. So first of all, in this first option, you can see that there are two alkene molecules where, with four different substituents. These are molecules in which we can assign our EZ nomenclature. And these are a type of diastereomers. So option A is one of the pair which is diastereomers. Let us see option B. Here you can see uh, there are three substituents in a cyclohexane ring. In the second pair you can see the position of the methyl group and the tertiary butyl group is same. So the absolute configurations at these two carbons remain the same. Whereas the, the bromine position, that is a bromine atom which was at the back is now towards you. So two of the absolute configuration is same, one is changed. So in last video we had discussed such type of molecules are also called as diastereomers. So option B is also a diastereomer. Let us see option C. It is a disubstituted cyclohexane in which two groups attached are hydroxyl group and butyl group. You can see in the second molecule, both the groups which were away from you are now coming towards you. That means the absolute configuration at both these carbons is changed. And such type of molecules are called as enantiomers. They will be non-superimposable mirror images. So this is not diastereomeric pair. Let us see the option D. Again, when you compare the second structure and the first structure, this is a cyclohexane ring kind of molecule. Only the difference is it is an oxygen. So this is a pyran type of molecule. We will be studying these in the further videos. Here again, you can see that is a CH2OH group and this OH groups are in same position that is the equatorial bonds and the position of this hydroxyl is changed from equatorial to axial. So these are also a pair of diastereomers. So a correct answer is option A, option B and option D. So this is a, another question from JAM 2017 paper. Among the following compounds, the pair of enantiomers is. So here there are four different molecules given to you and you have to identify which of the following pairs is enantiomers. Let us see the solution. So this is the first option. We have done the same exercise as we had done already in the previous videos. I have assigned uh, priority rules according to the atomic number here you can see at the second carbon the bromine gets the first priority comparing this carbon and this carbon this carbon gets the second priority as it is attached to three oxygens and hydrogen gets the least priority so from one to two to three it is anti-clockwise but the fourth priority group is on the wedge or horizontal hence the configuration is r let us see the third carbon here again I have assigned 1 to 2 to 3 according to the priority rules. The first priority goes to amino group as nitrogen has higher atomic number. Comparing between second and the third carbon, you can see this carbon is attached to a bromine group which is higher in atomic number. So from 1 to 2 to 3 it is clockwise and the fourth priority group is on the, is on the horizontal bond or the wedge. Hence the configuration at the third carbon is S. So let us see the second option that is option B. Here again we do the same exercise. Then we get from 1 to 2 to 3 it is anti-clockwise. But the fourth 
position group is on the wedge or horizontal so the configuration is R and the third carbon again we do the same exercise so from 1 to 2 to 3 it is clockwise and the absolute configuration is S and not R so let us see the third option here again we get 2S and 3R now if you compare the first option and the second option you can see the absolute configuration at carbon second and third is reversed in case of the third option that is 2R 3S changes to 2S 3R that is these two are a pair of enantiomers this is our answer that is option first and third that is molecule 1 and molecule 3 let us also see the last option here again uh, it is 2R and 3R which is not our correct answer so the correct answer to this question is option B that is first and the third molecule are a pair of enantiomers note that in option second and third I have rotated it to 180 degrees so that we can have a better comparison with this molecule Here is another question from JAM 2011 paper. Here again there are four options in which pairs of molecules are given to you and you have to identify the relationship between them whether they are identical enantiomers, diastereomers or structural isomers. Let us see the solution. So this is our first question. You can see that uh, this is one molecule and when we rotate, okay, this is uh, another molecule so first molecule will look something like this and to come make the comparison easier when we rotate the second molecule by 180 degree in plane it would look something like this that is this H will come to the right NH2 comes to the left carboxylic acid group comes on the top and this methyl group comes at the bottom so here you can see that the this is the chiral center and in the second molecule you can see the configuration is reversed so these are a pair of enantiomers let us see the second uh, set of molecule uh, here again you can see this molecule uh, is given and then this is a second option when we rotate this molecule again 180 degree in plane you will see that the H comes at the right this BR comes at the left and accordingly this hydrogen comes here on the left and this bromine comes on the right and this ethyl group comes on the top methyl goes down so you can see as when you compare this first molecule and this rotated second molecule you can see both are exactly the same so these are identical molecules this is a third set of molecules that has give that was given to you Again, we, this, we do the same exercise. We rotate the second molecule 180 degree in plane to get molecule something like this. You can see at the second carbon, the configuration is reversed. Whereas at the third carbon, it is exactly the same. So here, there are two chiral centers and out of which one is same and one is changed. We had discussed in the last video that these type of molecules are called as diastereomers. So here is another molecule, set of molecules. This is the first molecule. This is the second molecule which was given in the question. So when we rotate this second molecule, here you can see above it is an ethyl group and at the bottom it is a methyl group but you can see if we start numbering from this at the second position here there is a bromine atom but in here in the second position there is a chlorine atom so the bond connectivity itself is different in these two molecules and we had seen such molecules are called as constitutional or structural isomers so our correct answer is option C that is enantiomers, identical diastereomers and structural isomers. Here is another question from JAM 2008 paper. Among the following, the correct statement concerning the optical activity is, let us see all the options. A molecule containing two or more chiral centers are always optically active. Well, this is not true. We will see in the coming video there is something called as meso compounds. These are a class of compounds where there are minimum two chiral centers but a mesoplane 
passes through the molecule and makes it a chiral so not necessarily that a molecule containing two or more chiral centers are always optically active a molecule containing just one chiral center is always optically active this is very very true one chiral center is always going to be optically active third option a molecule possessing alternating axis of symmetry is optically active no any axis of symmetry present in a molecule whether it is alternating axis of symmetry or center of symmetry it will be optically inactive let us see the last option an optically active molecule should have at least one chiral center no this is also incorrect as we had seen some class of compounds in our previous videos like cumulines and biphenyls where there was no chiral center but still overall molecule was chiral so our correct answer is option b this is another question from jam 2007 paper here again two molecules are given to you you have to do the same exercise and find out whether these two given compounds are identical or diastereomeric or enantiomeric or constitutionally isomeric so let us see the solution this is the first molecule and this is the second molecule the second molecule uh, i have rotated it 180 degrees in plane and you can see if we start numbering from this uh, aldehyde group the second position you can see here there is a hydroxyl group but here it is a chloro group in the third position it is a chloro and here it is hydroxy so the bond connectivity or connectivity of groups is different at different positions such type molecules are called as constitutional isomers so our correct answer is option d so here we come to end of today's video so there is a good news that we have 100 subscribers in our chemazon family so thank you so much for your love and support keep learning keep exploring and thank you